listening to Secure Freedom Radio. Freedom Radio. Now more from Frank Gaffney. We'll hear now from my colleague Christine Brim at the Center for Security Policy with an extraordinarily exciting new initiative. Um, Christine is, as I mentioned at the outset of the program, um, one of the most extraordinary professionals in the national security business I've ever worked with, and she has helped pull together and is unveiling here at Secure Freedom Radio for the very first time the new website called CARE, C-A-I-R, as in Council on American Islamic Relations Observatory. Christine Brim, welcome back to Secure Freedom Radio. It's great to have you with us. Well, Frank, thank you so much for having me and for that kind introduction. Well, and well deserved, well deserved. But tell us, a CARE Observatory doesn't come trippingly to the tongue. What is that about? Well, the careobservatory.org website is the result of a two year uh, investigation that we've been doing in cooperation with a number of other groups of the Council on American Islamic Relations Activities, which we contend uh, make it a foreign agent under a law called the Foreign Agents Registration Act. And they're acting as a foreign agent on behalf of foreign powers, specifically Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Iran, and Kuwait. Wow. Uh, and because uh, they are also working as a foreign agent on behalf of an organization called the Organization of Islamic Conference, which is... Hold on. Um, uh, let me stop you for just a moment. Sure. Because I, while I would like to think everybody listening to Secure Freedom Radio has had a pretty good grounding in the Council on American-Islamic Relations. It probably is a good idea to back the lens up here for just a minute uh, before getting into all of these associations and, and activities to say, who are these guys? Good, good point. Um, the Council on American-Islamic Relations uh, is an unindicted co-conspirator in the Holy Land Foundation uh, terrorism finance trial. They present themselves since their founding in 1994 as a civil rights organization for Muslims living in America. But in fact, the Holy Land Foundation trial established uh, absolutely conclusively through video, through documents, uh, through testimony, that they were founded as a front group for Hamas a known terrorist organization uh, dedicated to the overthrow of uh, the United States as well as uh, Israel. And uh, CARE was created as basically the PR front, uh, the, the, the fifth columnist group, uh, to function as the lobby for Hamas here in America. Okay, so hold that thought for just a second. We're, we're speaking with Christine Brim, the chief operating officer of the Center for Security Policy, about the Council on American Islamic Relations, better known as CARE. And what I just heard you say is this is deemed by the United States government as a, an associated group of the Muslim Brotherhood, which has as its mission the destruction of Western civilization from within. And what you've indicated here with the CARE observatory.org website is that this Muslim Brotherhood front is actually working as an unregistered, that is to say unlawful, foreign agent for countries uh, and, and entities like the Organization of the Islamic Conference that have that shared purpose of Islamicizing the United States, imposing Sharia law upon it. So if this is true that the Council on American Islamic Relations care is not a registered foreign agent uh, as it should be, and that's what this website um, indicates. What are the implications of that for care? Well, there's several implications, and uh, one is to start with how CARE brands themselves. They call themselves the largest uh, Muslim civil rights organization in America, which the media, and indeed uh, until very recently uh, the FBI and other governmental entities, took as um, the received truth. Now, subsequently the FBI, uh, as was publicized a year ago, uh, has severed all relations with CARE. Uh, but the media still puts them on regularly, Fox News, uh, mm. mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, as spokespersons representing American Muslims. In fact, their, their revenues, we knew this um, in their most recent tax returns from 2006, their revenues uh, 
less than 1%, 1% of their revenues come from membership dues, which means that 99% of their revenues are coming from someplace else. So we decided to find out where that was. And one of the things that we turned up was a significant set of uh, monies, including literally millions of dollars in contributions, income, and money from foreign principals. So if, instead of being a civil rights organization, CARE, in fact, is functioning here as a foreign agent, there's a law for that. Mm -hmm. And that law is the Foreign Agents Registration Act. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with being a foreign agent in the United States. We have all kinds of groups. If, if the Australian, you know, various countries' tourism bureaus are registered as foreign agents. Uh, what, what is unlawful is to function as a foreign agent and not register. And it is a criminal act. Okay, that's what I was trying to get it at. It is a criminal act. We're, t- we're talking with Christine Brim of the Center for Security Policy about careobservatory.org. And if the criminal acts repercussions if care is in fact in violation of the law would be what well there's the the department of justice is the office that um administers shall we say and decides on enforcement of the foreign agents registration act and by the way this is an interesting act it actually came about in the late 30s because of uh, Nazis uh, who were working in this country uh, immediately prior to World War II, mm-hmm. and were it was created so that there was some sort of uh, legal way to deal with spies and espionage and people acting as foreign agents. And if if it is established that care is in fact acting as a foreign agent here and has not registered, then the Department of Justice can prosecute uh, either civilly or criminally. Or both uh, is our understanding. So, and if again, just to get particular yeah. about this, Christine, if the Department of Justice decides to prosecute and is successful in prosecuting the Council on American Islamic Relations for operating as an unregistered foreign agent for governments like that of Saudi Arabia, Iran, and entities like the Organization of the Islamic Conference, what? kinds of penalties could be involved? Well, the the fine will be not more than $10,000 or imprisonment for not more than five years or both for each violation. Now, our findings included 10 individual transactions totaling uh, at least $2,192,000, 50 political influence operations, 30 meetings with foreign principals, uh, an additional $2 million mortgage loan. And let me add that we know of $2.4 million in additional loans and contributions that came in, which for legal reasons we cannot reveal at this point publicly. Mm. So we are looking at literally millions, over at least at least $7 million worth of loans and contributions, and an additional $54 million worth of pledges that came in. So there's, this is not an insignificant... This is not chump change. This is not chump change, and it is the kind <laughs> of uh, money and, frankly, the kind of political influence and, and very public posture that CARE has maintained that could make the Department of Justice think seriously about either a criminal case or enforcing, you know, a very a very strong civil case. Yeah, well, I, I would certainly hope so. Look, um, we're interested in, of course, those of us who are concerned about the Muslim Brotherhood's operations within our country, about not only CARE, which is a particularly noxious um, manifestation of the Brotherhood's operations, stealth jihad operations in this country, but other organizations that fall into the same basic category of uh, identified, and as you mentioned earlier, the Holy Land Foundation criminal trial, the largest terrorist financing trial in U.S. history as unindicted co-conspirators, including organizations like the Islamic Society of North America, the Muslim Students Association, uh, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, and, and on and on. Right. Would these other entities perhaps be susceptible to the same kind of prosecution as CARE 
um, in the event that they, too, have operated as unregistered foreign agents. Well, indeed. And the, the model here was to uh, establish a precedent to the extent uh, that the evidence is there and is strong, and we contend that it is very, very strong uh, for CARE. But also this website, careobservatory.org, uh, is is meant to provide a, a model for how to do research in this area, for how to pull all the documents together. We have literally every tax return that has been filed by CARE and by their 30 or so related corporations, because this is really a network of organizations across the country. Mm-hmm. We have all of the property documents, because they own extensive properties. We haven't even talked about their, their assets. We've just talked about the donations that came right. in. Uh, but so this is... And, we and so if you, if you actually add the value value of those properties, it's it's considerably greater than the amounts that you've uh, identified in terms of net worth, Absolutely. theoretically. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that, that uh, as we as we look at these other groups, uh, to uh, Muslim Public Affairs uh, Council, ISNA, uh, uh, Islamic Circle of North America, and others, uh, many of whom have been named and were named as well as um, and are also unindicted co-conspirators in the Holy Land uh, finance trial, North, North American Islamic Trust, which actually holds the deeds to estimated somewhere around 50 percent up to possibly 80 percent of all of the Islamic centers and mosques in this country. Uh, We're looking at uh, a variety of scenarios, uh, but certainly if there is money coming from foreign principal, and by the way, that doesn't have to be a government. That can be an an organization. It can be a private group. It can be an individual. It can be an individual sheik. Those are all Considered like foreign principles under this Prince Al Walid bin Talal, exactly. for example. Exactly. That yeah. Mr. bin Talal. The billionaire in- Saudi prince who's buying up the Georgetown University Middle East Studies Program and the Harvard University Studies Program and much of Fox News and, and, and others. We're, we're, we're witnessing this cancer really metastasizing. And we're speaking with Christine Brim of the Center for Security Policy about a marvelous new tool for exposing what these brotherhood operations, specifically the Council on American Islamic Relations, are up to. And, Christine, we're going to run out of time here, but but just quickly, give us a sense of, you've uh, indicated that this is a sort of central clearinghouse of documentation and that that it's an interactive uh, site. Tell us what you envision this being for those of us who are concerned about um, these organizations and their activities in America and how we can take advantage of this resource most effectively. We wanted to create a kind of benchmark of a serious, uh, well-argued, legally-oriented website that could be used to analyze the activities of the Muslim Brotherhood front groups in this organization as foreign agents. So among the, in the process of doing that, uh, we wanted to be a model for using this on other organizations. We are asking as well for the public where they can, can come in and look at, for instance, all of the real estate documents or uh, all of the tax returns. There are accountants or there may be uh, uh, you know, realtors out there and you're listening public who could go to careobservatory.org, take a look at some of these documents, and frankly, they may find all kinds of information in there that we have missed. So our goal is to, to employ the so-called Army of Davids uh, that the Internet enables of uh, lots of people who are experts looking at verified uh, evidence and coming together to to work together with our, our combined expertise yeah. to make this case. There will be much work done here, I'm quite certain, and uh, what a marvelous initiative. Um, I, I take great pride in uh, the Center for Security Policy's uh, work in helping to bring this um, to bear in conjunction with uh, other organizations that have, uh, have been invaluably assisting us over the years in uh, in unmasking care. And uh, Christine Brim, I want to particularly thank you for your tremendous leadership and, um, and your uh, extraordinary attention to detail, which will make this site, I think, particularly valuable to, uh, to those of us in the fight. Well, thank you. For, for those who enjoy seeing um, the activities of foreign agents, millions of dollars crossing hands from overseas into political activities here, I think they'll enjoy visiting the site and reading the report. Yeah, it's, it's required reading if you're a serious <laughs> student of the Brotherhood and its operations in America. Christine Brim, thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to having you back soon with uh, updates on this and and other good works that uh, you're helping to ensure get done by the Center for Security Policy. Thanks so much.